Greetings, fellow philosophers. In this short little PowerPoint, I want to talk about the key ideas in our reading on Menno, and then uh, set the stage for some of the work that we're going to be doing. So uh, the reason we chose this as the very first article in the course because, is because it identifies one of the key themes in the course, and that's the idea of, of virtue and whether or not virtue can be taught. And as we will see throughout the course, uh, this idea of, of education being related to the cultivation of virtue is a key idea. In modern society, we oftentimes think of education as more related to knowledge, and that certainly is something that, that appears, even appears in this article. But the idea that uh, the fundamental nature of education should be about the, the accumulation of facts is something that was foreign to the thinkers of of the philosophical thinkers of, of the last 2,500 years. The key idea is this idea that education should help to make someone someone virtuous. And so uh, Plato starts up Meno, and there's an extended section where he begins to unpack this idea about what is virtue. And as you see, there are several different answers that are offered, and each one of them is, is dismissed. So we're left at the end of the first section of the book with a puzzle about what is virtue and and then also later on what um, uh, so what is virtue well it's not easily defined it's definitely more complicated than we originally thought uh, we know that it has something to do with knowledge um, and, and right living but but that's about it in the middle of a, you know, there's this very interesting section about the this triangle and if you follow the, the, the gist of the conversation, uh, Plato was able to ask or ask questions of the slave, the slave boy. And uh, he was able to do some other, rather um, interesting kind of uh, geometry without having been taught geometrical principles. And so from that, uh, Plato infers, or Socrates infers, that, that he must have already known these principles that, in his mind, prior to this life, he had learned these things and brought that knowledge with him. And, and you can argue about the metaphysics of that, but the takeaway point from this is that this is a key idea in, in what will become part of the debate about whether or not there are any ideas that are innate, innate or are all ideas have to be learned. Do we have to have experiences first before we know something, or do we know things somewhat intuitively? Can we draw on that intuition in order to be able to, to teach people things? And we'll um, discover this idea later on in the semester. Plato was of the idea that you can discover things um, without having been taught things, and that there is an intuition that we possess that you can draw on when you are when you're talking with somebody. Uh, but what the, the the big takeaway though from Menno is this idea of, of, of virtue and and whether or not it can be taught. And so you remember the, the one section there that's um, where Plato talks about whether or not virtue can be taught and and uses as an example rich parents. Rich parents um, can obtain for their children tutors that can teach them just about anything, horseback riding, how to shoot a bow and arrow. So you would think that if they could uh, hire the best tutors, they and those tutors could teach those things that are important for a child to know, that they'd be able to hire the kind of tutors that would enable them to, to teach them how to be good. And Plato brings up that something that we probably know as well, is oftentimes the children of rich parents are some of them um, are some of the worst examples of, of what human beings can and should be. So from that he infers that, no, that this another example he draws on to suggest that virtue can't be taught. So um, so we know that, that virtue is uh, related to, um, to knowledge, and it, but it, it's not in the same way because you can teach people to add, subtract, multiply, and divide much easier how to, to be do, do right and wrong. So the, um, uh, the only takeaway that he has is that people who are good are, are good because they have some kind of divine imprint on them, that God blessed people to be good, some people to be good, and he didn't give that same gift to others. 
Now we will see even next in our next reading that that is not an opinion that's shared by all philosophers, but it, it certainly is something that's an idea that's plausible. I mean, why is it that some people are good and some people aren't even in the same families? So that is the um, at the end of the at the end of the uh, at the end of the reading. That was what we are left with. Um, is it just a gift of the gods, and God gives to some and and not to others? And we ask the question: Does that satisfy you? Uh, is there something that we can a value that we can take away from from that perspective? And I asked you to to puzzle on that and think about that. Um, the idea of whether or not goodness is in, in, innate or intuitive to some and not to others. And it would certainly change our, our view of people if it was. And if it wasn't, we would then also you know, have a different view about the possibility of people being able to. So um, the other, one of the other uptakes, uh, one of the other um, uh, implications of this, this passage is summarized in the quote I had towards the end where Socrates was able to convince two, um, two individuals that they really didn't know what they were talking about. And this idea that, um, that we don't know as much as we think we know, that the wisest man is the individual who, doesn't, who knows that he doesn't know very much, is a huge part of, of Socrates. That um, this idea that we should be humble, more humble than we often are, because we really don't know as much as, as we think we do. So um, one of the things I always like to think about in our class is to to, to integrate this with with our um, with, with with our commitment to our faith. As you know, Fresno Pacific University is a faith based institution, and we we think about these ideas and these themes from the perspective of our faith commitments and traditions. And um, I thought about whether or not this particular idea of about whether virtue can be taught, um, whether does, whether it has any kind of a biblical foundation or basis, and um, there's a parable that um, that might suggest something similar to what Plato had in mind. He, you know, the parable of the sower, and the sower goes out and sows seeds on the ground, and some seed lands on fertile soil and sprouts, and some seed lands on rocks and and doesn't. And um, and it's a thing, interesting thing to think about is to think about this idea of of innate characteristics uh, towards and dispositions towards goodness and and not. And whether or not there is something, something to all that, that people, there are people who come to a point in their life where they might be hardened and either can't or won't um, learn from mistakes and learn to be good or learn to grow. And what does it mean to have a certain kind of soil that seed would land on? And what does that say about the nature of our hearts and how to watch them so we don't become hardened? Uh, this idea that you can come to a point in your life where you do become hardened and you can't be changed and you don't change, you don't grow, and don't develop into in, in becoming more more Christ-like, more more value-oriented. It's something that, that we, we can and, and, and should be mindful of in our own lives and the lives of those people that we So that would be just a, a brief introduction. Again, the, this idea that about whether virtue can be taught is a huge idea in this course. And um, the purpose of this particular reading was to give us a um, the philosophical uh, foundation for um, for thinking about this particular idea. And again, it will be something that we refer to throughout the course.